Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon, starts now. Your microphone was good open, morning, Rebecca. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't take black folks nowhere. Good Lord, good morning, how y'all doing? Good, good. Um, Did somebody good. just walk past my? I felt like somebody just walked past like uh, six cents. Like they be every now and then they catch me off guard. Just walk by real fast. I'm it doing good this morning. Me. Nope, nobody asked, but I'm doing good. Oh Ben, how you doing, brother? Rebecca, I'm all right. Rebecca, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Listen. <laughs> This is the roughest good morning we've had so far since we started minute, the entire what? show. It's been, it's oh, been. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot what I was supposed to say. Welcome. I was going to say that. Go welcome ahead. to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. All right. It is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. We have a pretty jam-packed show today again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> who is touching like it or not right now? We're giving the people what they want, honey. We're giving them we're what giving they them need. Going. We're giving them love. We're giving yeah. them church. We're giving them the streets. Mm. We're yeah. giving them everything. This is where you're giving you can them ratchet. Find, yeah. Ratchet. <laughs> ratchet. And, and 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 I think this is exactly what I need every morning. I need all of these because this is what yeah. we all are basically combined, though. We're just this big um ball yeah. of everything Have that people you, say that we should we can't be. Right? right, 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 right. And we're just doing it our way, doing it the way we want. And it's looking yeah. good. Check out the ticker at the bottom. Ever improving right. okay. graphics. Go to https forward slash forward slash patreon.com forward slash C. Follow the instructions in the ticker. Um, I'm excited about our guest today, uh, Nikki Aaliyah. Oh, Earth mm, is, is ghetto. ghetto. I want to leave, 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 leave me up. Look, everybody's hey, on a different I'm key. I'm out on the street, <laughs> it's okay. on the corner. And so on you different know beats, but. Oh, yes, 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 Vibrata. Yes, Vibrata. Yes. We're going bl- to blame it on uh, Zoom. Zoom is messing up our rhythm and our pitches. But that said, right. I- I'm going to try to convince her to sing us a rendition of America is Ratchet. That's what I want to hear. Like, Earth is ghetto. But America is ratchet, so we a ratchet or shit hole. You know no, what? America, America's a shit hole. That's what she's just saying. There we go. But I don't know if she curses, but um, ratchet, <laughs> ratchet, and um, ghetto can be 
it, you know, when we associate it with America, we mean that in the most negative way possible. Right. Right. But I mean, like with trailer us. park. I mean, like trailer park. It's That's cult. what I mean. Like trailer park trash. Because I know and I say that and I'm saying that to say because they always associate our hoods as ghetto and nasty yeah. and da 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 da. That's how it's always been. So yeah, when I right. say ghetto, it's their ghetto. <laughs> it's well, the if you really think about ghetto. it and you really break it down, ghetto is an economic phenomenon that's rooted. No, I'm joking. Not this early. Not this early. Look, no, I'm like, here he goes. <laughs> about to run it. Okay. No, no, I'm gonna, go. no, no, go. no. It's fact, everything I said was facts. But we're gonna run it. We're gonna save it after she does the America's a shithole uh, rendition. She probably won't do it, but still, I could, I could, I could dream. So we have her coming on. We also have state representative here from Georgia, uh, Renita, Renita Shannon, Shannon coming on, and we have Professor Matt Sinkowitz coming on. Um, a lot happening. What's up, Matt? Matt from the old school. Matt from, remember, from the OG. From, well, he's from, your OG, <laughs> but you you introduced me to him back in 2017, and yeah, what's yeah, up, nah, he's yeah. We haven't. He hasn't been on in a minute, so we wanted to definitely bring my brother from another mother on and uh, cover the news and politics as usual. So yeah. I guess we should just, I mean, I want to more shenanigans, but I mean, we may as well get into it with all the news that's happening. Rebecca, yeah. I think you called it yesterday. You said what we need is President Biden to actually call out these governors, right? Mm-hmm. And he, said I th- he finally, he said something and, and <laughs> rightfully so. He, sh- he, he should have said something day one, but, but we'll give him credit where credit is due. On Wednesday, Biden spoke to the press uh, from the Oval Office where he was asked about Mississippi and Texas removing their mask mandates. And he said, quote, I think it's a big mistake, he said, uh, but I want us to take a listen in to his own words as he refers to them as uh, Neanderthals. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Texas, I think it's a big mistake. Look, I hope everybody's realized by now these masks make a difference. We are on the cusp of being able to fundamentally change the nature of this disease because of the way in which we're able to get vaccines in people's arms. We've been able to move that all the way up to the end of May to have enough for every American to get every adult American to get a shot. And the last thing, the last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. It still matters. I carry a card. I don't have it. I put it on my desk. As of last, as of yesterday, we had lost 511,874 Americans. We're going to lose thousands more. This will not occur. We'll not have everybody vaccinated until sometime in the summer. We have the vaccine to do it getting a shot in someone's arm and getting a second shot, you're going to take time. And it's critical, 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 critical that they follow the science. Wash your hands, hot water, do it frequently, wear a mask and stay socially distanced. And uh, I know you all know that. I wish the heck some of our elected officials knew it. All right. All right. So uh, shout out to him, because I think I referred to them as Neanderthals yesterday. Not that he's reading my Twitter timeline, but some of his officials do follow me. But I digress. The point is, it's absolutely absurd what's happening in Texas and Mississippi. He is a little little humble brag. But no, it is Neanderthal thinking whether he he got it from my timeline or not. It's absolutely absurd that we're this close to getting every single American uh, uh, adult American vaccinated by what did he say? June. And just before we get this going, no, he said May. And so just before we get to that point, Texas and Mississippi have decided we haven't killed enough people yet. So 511,000, that's not enough. Let's go ahead and open up the bars. And I don't know if you saw it. There are some uh, there are some clubs in Florida that were open yesterday, jammed, packed. And somebody in the comment section actually nailed it. They said this is a combination of spring break coming up as well as tax refunds. They want your money. And if it costs you Mm. your life, they don't care so long as you leave them your money first. Rebecca and James, what do you think? One, about um, President Biden calling them out, rightfully so. And number two, the fact that these clowns are still pushing us to killing ourselves in order for them to make money. So um, I'm glad he spoke up. Um, I'm glad President uh, Robinette spoke up. And I think that um, (laughs) I think that, you know, him speaking up means like he's listening. He got to be listening because at this point, I think that if he wasn't held accountable or mm-hmm. being asked where he was, not that, I mean, before we asked where he was and he stayed missing uh, at the last incident um, <laughs> with Kamala Harris. But now, you know, I think that he's starting to see, and he, I think when it comes to COVID, he actually understands that 
Because that this is the, those are one of COVID is one of the things that he's held close to him. Like yeah. that's one of the only policies that I feel like he's really driving because yeah. I don't maybe that he, it feels near and dear to him. And the other policies don't really mean much, but that we will explore more um, mm. as his presidency <laughs> continues. But here, the COVID thing, I will say, OK, now he should have spoke up sooner, but I can't, you know, at least he spoke up, you know, yeah. at least he did. And I think that he's listening. That may be something that he was listening to us about, like, yo, this is something that's crazy. You're talking about getting COVID vaccines to people and doing all of this. And what he what and what the states like Texas and Mississippi are doing is saying, nah, forget all that. Yeah. No mask. We need that money. <laughs> so yeah, no mask. We need money. Like let's let's go ahead and start funding the states and, and forget the people. And right. that's what that's where the um the problem is for me. And I just I just feel like I understand he's smooth. I'm not asking him to be you know, all rambunctious and like, you know, in your face about it. But when when he was with Obama, I did see a little bit more of um, fervor. And I mean, I know he's older, but I need that same like Neanderthals is great. But right. Pump that um, energy up, though. Like this is because it's cool what he said. It's accurate what he said. But yeah. like we need some heat on these governors. Like, we need yes. some real pressure. Like, we need some bullying going on, James. Like, you can't just, like, it is, he needed to say this, but they're still going to open up these states and people are still going to die, honest. man. Yep. And that's what I was just about to say, Ben, echo the same thing that you said was, like, you hold the executive office mm -hmm. of the country. So go ahead and use that pressure on, them, on those two states, man. Don't let this happen. And it made sense what you said. Tax return coming. Possible stimulus is coming real soon. So they trying to open all this stuff back up and get all this money in. That's all that yeah. is. But the excuses that they make, and this is, this, this, this is it, my Yes. Question. This is like, don't try to, you know, give me the head up face on Twitter because mm. I said we need to hold them accountable. I believe if we don't mm. hold them accountable, we're not going to get statements like, they are Neanderthals, which are quotable right. moments. But yes, Bubba, you said something really, really important. We have to put the, this is the president of the United States. Why are we putting people yeah. in those positions if, they, if they're just, if you guys are going to give them excuses and said, well, they're just there because they just, we need a leader to do nothing. I don't mm. understand. Mm. You guys always have an excuse. So why did we, why okay. did we put him in this seat? This is what I'm saying. Yeah. All these excuses are nothing. He does need to put pressure on them. He does need to walk in that. He does need to walk around like I'm that dude. I run yeah. America because you do. So right. if you can, if you can get your team of people together to start putting pressure on these states and things like that, I, you know, this will show it will make more sense. But, and then you're the one that talks about by, you're the one that literally ran your campaign on one thing. As soon as you sat down in office, gave the whole rhetoric about bipartisanship. Right. Like, don't run when, when it gets hot. Don't start oh. getting calm when it yeah. gets hot. We need you to be, we need you to be on fire, especially when America is on fire. We yeah. need mm. that. Yeah. Especially when that girl is on fire. You better speak, Rebecca. Because uh, <laughs> truth is, like, man, the one thing Donald Trump understood that I don't think Democrats actually want to understand is that use the bully pulpit. Donald Trump used the bully pit, pulpit for evil, quite honestly. So why the hell aren't Democrats using it relentlessly to do good? Well, that's because a lot of the policies that um, are sneaking by or not getting implemented, rather. Let me correct myself, Rebecca, because you said it. What good is electing this president, um, those two distinguished senators now from the state of Georgia? We did our part. We got them elected. What good is all that for them to just go up there and then all of the people who love them make excuses when they don't do anything? Now, we wanted to start the episode to give you guys the good thing that Joe Biden did, which was to call them Neanderthals. Good. But we got some serious problems here. And some of the serious problems include the lack of delivering on promises. And there is an urgency of right now because people need $15 an hour right now. Hell, they needed it 15 years ago. People need these $2,000 checks right now. They don't need all of this equivocation and all this triangulator. And who are they? We, there's a whole other story we're going to get to. My problem is this. People who make excuses so that their governors, their senators, and their presidents, their representatives, the people that we elect to go do stuff on behalf of us, 
Then all of the fans are like, oh, no, 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 no. It's okay. We don't actually care if they don't get us $15 an hour. Well, how? Because that's what they promised us. All of right? a sudden, they, all don't of a, they, they don't care. And, and that drives me Like, what it's literally, really what good too. is it? What good is it for you to just line up and make excuses for them when they ain't doing nothing for us? I, I just, I mean, that's just me. Um, what, but you what? know what? And I'm going to take it a step further, right? And um, to me, it is similar to how the Republicans and their constituents mm -hmm. were with Trump when mm -hmm. he was in office. It was an excuse after an excuse after an excuse. Now, it almost makes me think, no, it, even when President Obama was in office, we mm -hmm. did the same thing. We made excuses because he was black. Now, he was the first black president. It was a big deal. It was a Good. phenomenon. Yeah. It was yeah. all of that. Yeah. Um, so, but we learned a lesson. That's why, that's why we did not, we're not just going to vote for somebody because they're black. That's why we haven't gotten mm. anything else. We're like, we're not doing that again. We need yeah. more. We need more and we need more. But with um, Donald Trump, there were, there's always an excuse being made. There was always an excuse being made. He's not even in office anymore. And there's always excuses. They always had excuses. Th like literally, yeah. like the people ran up at the Capitol and these people made excuses. Who did they blame? Of course it was Black Lives Matter. Um, mm -hmm. But we have um, uh, about to call him Donald Trump, but I feel like this is the same thing that we are seeing for the people and um, Joe Biden. And I hate to say it, but this is culty. This is culty. Yeah. And you guys have an excuse for everything. Holding him accountable does not mean that I'm saying he should not be president because right. that does not mean that I hate him. That does not, that doesn't mean any of that. What it means is we need a president to do president stuff. <laughs> you know, to say, oh my God, you should have said it exactly the way you started to say it, Rebecca. Okay. I'll pay the fine. We need a president to do presidential shit, man. We need you to get out there and actually do. Go ahead, sis. I'll take the charge for you. Go no, that, that, that's it. I ain't saying it, but you said it for me, and, and that's right. really all, all it boils down to. So we can't, we can't, and that's being that's us being very hypocritical now. Dems have always been hypocritical. We've been everybody's hypocritical in this space. I understand, but this ain't the time to not hold this man accountable. It's like right. we can hold him accountable, still love him. Mm. We gotta mold him. We gotta teach him how to love us. We gotta teach him how to lead us. We how can't just do. have an excuse every single time. It's we've already went through this. Like lessons learned. Let's do that. Let's walk in something different. That's the only way. So stop getting on Twitter and attacking people saying, like with Kamala. Somebody wrote me mm. to something I wrote about a week. Saying, where is she? Like, I really want to know where she is. And, like, you are our vice president. Mm -hmm. Like, again, we put you in this position because we thought you was going to do work. Now, you are not the most, I don't really, I don't like you and your policies, like in your history, but we got you in this position. You said you were going to do something. Where is it? Where are you? It's important yeah. that you show up. It's important that you, yeah. as the vice president of the United States, show up for Use these that states. Power. Use your yeah. power. Use your relationships. Use your voice that was so damn loud <laughs> a few months ago. Use that. So the woman, the, the person that wrote me said, maybe it's because of what happened on um, uh, the, the terrorist attack that happened that she's laying low because March 4th huh? is supposed to be a day. Mm, March 4th is supposed to be a day where they're, they're going to be... Um, trying to go in and attack those people again and Kamala being almost uh, high on that list or something they wrote me. And I said, we have, a, we have presidents that have been assassinated. We got um, cars that were built for those kind of things. We have secret uh, service. We have all of these yeah. things, right? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that she needs to go out. She could be on TikTok. You know, Joe, she can do it. it. She can do she it from the safety it. of the White House. She can do it from the golf course that's on her land, on her property. She could do all right. of or any of it. She can talk to the people. There are ways. OK, you can zoom it, sis. You can zoom it. Something. We need to know where you are. People need zoom to be it comfortable. In. People need to understand. People need to be comfortable that they and, and, and feel like they can rely on who they voted for. It's not right. like, girl, I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna go on a sabbatical after y'all y'all done hire me for the position. I'm gonna take all my days, <laughs> sick mm. days, vacation days, PT, all of that. All, all of that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> let me tell you that. Let's so so let, let's let's contextualize this a little bit for them because um, you know, I know the audience watching probably already knows all the headlines from yesterday. Um, but we have plenty of reason for us to be shouting at the president and the vice president at this moment, right? Um, and we, if nobody else has the right to do so, it'll be the folks right here on the screen. 
because we all actively participated in helping win Georgia, right? For the president. And we all actively participated in helping win Georgia for Warnock, Raphael Warnock and, and, and the other dude, uh, uh, whatever his name is. Um, so if anybody oh, has a right, John also, yeah, his, his, his dude. Ass. So anyway, um, if anybody has a right to hold this administration accountable, it would be the people who actually voted for him. Right. That said, Joe Biden has already caved on stimulus eligibility. Right. They're narrowing the gap. They're narrowing the range of people who can receive a stimulus check. President Joe Biden has decided to narrow the eligibility for the next round of stimulus payments mm. after immense pressure from moderate Senate Democrats pushing for a quote unquote more targeted spending. Biden and Senate Democrats have decided that individuals earning under $75,000 and couples who earn under $150,000 will still get the full $1,400 person amount. According to reports, these limits would result in roughly $12 billion in savings, which is a rounding error. I want y'all to be clear. $12 billion in savings is a rounding error for every bill that this Senate and this Congress puts out. Jeff Stein of the Washington Post also took to Twitter saying the following. He said, quote, small update here. Limiting the benefit results in roughly $12 billion in savings per Democratic aid. The whole bill is $1.9 trillion. So we're literally looking at a rounding error because pressure from moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Kirsten Sinema, they don't want to simply write the American people a check in this pandemic. This is not only stupid, it's bad politics because they have set up a scenario where people can legitimately now say that they got more money during the pandemic from the fascist white supremacist in chief Donald Trump. And so now they're setting up this situation where they're going to be millions of Americans. I think to the tune of 12 million families are no longer going to get a stimulus check and it's just completely unnecessary and asinine because that amount of money is a rounding error in a $1.9 trillion bill. Who does it benefit? It benefits nobody. Who does it hurt? It hurts millions of Americans and it also hurts the Democratic Party. It's the dumbest thing that I've ever seen in my life. And yet and still you have all of these sycophants, all of these these fanboys and fangirls and fan non-gender conforming individuals who are making excuses for this man in the White House. I, I, I don't have, this is not how politics work, people. Would you make an excuse? I want to ask everybody a question. Let's contextualize this a little bit more, Rebecca. I'm going to throw it back to you. Would you allow your partner in your household to make all of the promises necessary for him to move in or her to move in or for they to move in, right? And then when they get in there, they literally renege on every single thing they promised you. You would not allow this in your household. Why the hell would we allow this in the White House? It's crazy, right? Here we go. Now we got to take it to the realistic times because we be lying. We would be like, yo. You make some excuses, wouldn't you? You make some excuses. You just, your family's getting involved and you're like, mind your business. It's my home. I'm going to check them. <laughs> you try house. to check them. You give them some of the rules. You lay it down. You tell them this is how it's supposed to be. You, you let them slide a little bit. Then you get frustrated, <laughs> right? Because you, right. you got to hold them accountable. You're holding them accountable in your home. You're keeping home in home. And, you know, when you get out, you try to make excuses for them. But then it comes to a point where now you're going to be like, you're going to explode and you're going to kick him out. Stuff is His stuff is going to be at the door. He got to go mm -hmm. stay with his mama because you're not doing it. <laughs> but let's start now because we've learned before. It's one right. of those things. We knew what toxic was and yes. we've seen it in two forms. And I'm not, not to say I have to go back to President Obama because what we did was just love him because he was black. And yes, he yeah. and I loved his attitude and I, I love his wife. I love all that. It looked good. Mm -hmm. But there were things that we didn't hold him accountable for because of what it looked like. Come and on. then we had Donald Trump, who literally did all the, the worst things in the world, the worst things in the world and had people making excuses for him and mm -hmm. saying, you know, oh, my gosh, you know, this is just this is just how he is. And he's a superstar. So he's going to walk in that. We made excuses that created more of a monster. Yeah, created so much more of a monster. And the breakup is so bad and toxic that people don't want to let go. Mm. Now we're here. We've been through toxic situations already, guys. Let's let's move on. Let's change it. There is no excuse for us to try to do the same thing with Joe Biden. Joe Biden is somebody who was already in the White House. Come on. Okay? He already knows how to move. 
So we cannot yeah. we cannot keep giving him excuses. Okay. He has to stand in that. He has he has to move like a president. He has to move like a president. But the thing is, honestly, if we really do an analysis of this, he's doing exactly what he wants to do. Yep. Yeah. And that's the that's the stuff that really cuz cuz once you in a relationship That's pretty white of him. It's pretty white of him. <laughs> it's pretty Facts. gaslighting of him, right? Because in, you, you're in a relationship. You know what that breaking point is in most relationships? Mm. Is when you finally realize, oh, this, this dude ain't mean no good by me in the first place. Mm. Oh, this chick ain't mean no good by me in the first place. Oh, you've been gaslighting me the entire time. Yes, when you sit and down see, and you mm. kind of play everything back. And, Every, you know, and then it starts making it, sense. Yeah, we did it early. Like, we was damn. like, this man done ran his campaign on. <laughs> right. So it's not like it's not making sense. It's not like all three of us have been through some gaslighting situations. And when we see it now, see, because because once you see it, you can smell it a mile away. Like, yeah. like yep. once they said they blamed this on the parliamentarian and Kamala Harris ha literally has the power. Kamala Harris has the power to overturn that decision by the parliamentarian. And now everybody's making, oh, well, what about Joe Manchin? I wish Joe Manchin would. See, this is the thing. You, this is how you know you're, you're in a, an abusive relationship. When you deny the actual power of your partner. If your partner has the ability to fix a problem and you're sitting there like, oh, but if they actually try, then, then they might fail. I wish Joe Manchin would try Kamala Harris by undermining her authority as a vice president to overrule the rule of the parliamentarian. I wish he would. But what are we seeing online instead, Rebecca, James? What are we seeing? People making excuses saying, oh, we're scared of Joe, uh, Joe Manchin. You're scared of Joe Manchin? All this stuff that K-Hi have been talking about, all this noise they've been spitting on the internet, all them angry videos where they're in the, in the camera like, <laughs> all that. And y'all afraid of Joe Manchin and y'all going to let him stop Kamala Harris from rising to the occasion that millions of Americans would never forget. Kamala Harris would go down as a legend if she stood up in this moment. But instead, y'all prefer Jesus. an abusive relationship yes. and allow her to get away with doing nothing because y'all are scared of Joe Manchin. I wish Preach, that man. boy. Look, let me stop. Anyway. Look, you said it all. Let, let me say preaching. Bubba, <laughs> Bubba, he he was preaching. He he was preaching. Um, Bubba, listen, like you know those relationships where <laughs> you're with someone and 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 then like say a Kamala or a Kamala, excuse me, I need to get that right, but like a, a Kamala and um you're with her or 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 however and she she did all her history was bad. You know you like them thuggish. You know you like them with a little history. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, Rough around the edges. And, and, See that's your, you that's know, your problem, problem right there. That's that, the problem. That, right that is the problem. And then they clean up, and you're like, I believe in you. I see potential in you. Okay, I do. And um, I can work off poten potential. You know, <laughs> have ambition because we start trying to be Ian Van Zandt. On the person, <laughs> y'all start oh ministering to him. You know, baby, I got you. Put you right here in my bosom. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna pray. I pray Whatever over you, you at three a.m. I'm right here for you. And then they get up and do the same thing the next day, the day after that. You take them back. They only good for one week, and they back to normal. <laughs> back this to is normal. exactly what Kamala and Joe Biden are. And the thing is, and when they go missing, yes. <laughs> everybody makes an excuse for them. And it's like people, you you see the abuse. You Your mama and dad, the mama and daddy of this person will make an excuse like, you know, you know how he or she gets, you know how he mm -hmm. or she or they get, mm -hmm. you know, you know how it is. Give them some time, give them some grace. And you're going on year five. You ain't got no edges. <laughs> you ain't got no edges. Facial hair growing in at a million. Your body type, your body shape. Is just just all out of it's just you. Stress. Stress. <laughs> Rebecca is speed, spitting facts, girl. What I'm saying. All of it's that, an abusive time, relationship, bro. We are not. Listen, March 2020 of last year, I was in my bag. Like, as far mm. as, you know, my, just exercising, feeling good, about to turn 30. March 2021 of this year, I feel <laughs> I had to go to therapy. You know, I had to talk to a psychiatrist because of the, the just the year. Just yeah, the year. Yeah. And and I cannot, I do not want to go into this with with the hope that I had when Joe Biden was coming in. Yes, I had my reservations, yeah. but the hope that I had in comparison to what we had before. And right. we're going in and nothing has changed. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. In fact, they, they're they're literally breaking. 
I mean, it's even worse. I want to go to one next story because, because honestly, like, I, I think people, a couple things. Um, people should be aware that I am in this channel, and, and maybe I should let Rebecca and James, I should let you guys know too, because y'all on this channel with me now. I don't give a damn. I don't care. I literally do not care. The ten, I lost 20,000 people over a fight on Twitter, and I'll do it again. Because I'm going to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. And the truth of the matter is, is that there's some problematic things that are happening in the Biden administration already that I got to fight them on. Namely, Seth Harris, who previously served as acting labor secretary for President Obama, has reportedly been chosen to serve as labor advisor under the Biden administration. Now, Here's a problem I have with Seth Harris. He co-wrote California's anti-worker Proposition 22. Proposition 22 exempts companies like Uber and Lyft from having to classify their workers as employees, stripping them of basic wage and labor protections. I have a serious problem with this because his role in the Biden administration will focus on worker organizing, collective bargaining, and labor standard enforcement, among other issues. Uh, this is a quote from President Rich of uh, AFL CIO President Richard Trumpka. He said, "Seth has a broad base of knowledge about the labor community." Well, uh, uh, President Richard Trumpka, let's talk about Proposition 22. He is the brainchild. He is the trust. He is the person who pushed it, and it literally violates the rights of every single worker who drives for Uber and Lyft. And this Proposition 22 in California is trying to spread across the entire country. Meanwhile, in the UK, they're doing the exact opposite when it comes to these uh, gig organizations, these gig companies like Uber and Lyft. But here in the United States, they're allowing our labor force to be treated like wage slaves. Right. They're allowing us to be exploited even further by these companies that are making billions of dollars. Uber and Lyft make billions of dollars every single year and they cannot take care of their labor force. And this is who I almost said Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. It could have been Donald Trump who made this type of appointment. But this is who Joe Biden has chosen in this moment. The problem I got with this runs extremely deep. Because anytime, anytime someone puts somebody in their administration who expressly is doing the bidding of corporations that have no qualm, no hesitation, no reservation whatsoever about exploiting labor, we have to have a problem with it. Mm. Because if Democrats aren't going to fight on behalf of working people, you mm. sure as hell know Republicans aren't going to fight on behalf of working people. So mm. what the hell are working people supposed to do besides around the world uniting and fighting back against this type of oppression? Mm. You all are leaving us with no choice. The decisions that this administration is making in the first 100 days is literally leaving us with no choice. The people are going to have to take matters into their own hands. Rebecca, that's all I got. Look, you said it. Stop saying stuff and then coming to me. Stop, <laughs> saying, stop going on this long thing and then being like, boom, mic drop. Rebecca? <laughs> Rebecca? I just, it bothers me, though. It, no, no. See, see, and, and Rebecca, you know, this is the, you know this to be true about me. If nobody else knows this to be true about me, you know I don't play around with labor. I don't play mm -hmm. around with it. That's what blew up that other thing, Right. That shall remain. Never mind. Let me stop there. The thing when that will people, remain nameless. When <laughs> people, when people mess with workers, that's yeah. fighting words. That's that's enough because your system doesn't work without us. In the audience, I guarantee. How many of y'all worked overnight shifts? I've worked to an overnight shift for two mm. years. Right to this I've, day. You know what I mean? We 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 out here working hard. <laughs> people out here giving their life in order to just survive. And you mean to tell me you're going to take somebody who does not give a shit enough about workers. And so, it's, so it's, 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 it's actually different. It's not only that he doesn't care about workers. He is so pro corporations that he will sacrifice millions of workers for the profits of a few people. And this is who Joe Biden is picking for his administration. Folks. If you don't like what we're saying, I'm sorry, Rebecca. I'm sorry, James. I know we're trying to get these numbers up. I know, but, but, but unfollow, unsubscribe right now because if you cannot speak truth wherever it has to be spoken, you can't rock with this show because I'm, we're liable to step on your toes every single day because when the truth hurts, that's all the more reason we got to spit it. You know what I mean? We, we got to tell the truth even when it hurts.
and y'all being gaslit, like oh, whether you like whether, it or not. Whether you like yeah. it or not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Um, you said a, a really good point there. It's funny because with Biden is choosing the, these people with the history of um, not caring for people. Um, mm-hmm. And it's funny because it seems like it's not funny because I ain't laughing, but it's interesting <laughs> because it seems like Joe Biden is trying so hard. He's doing six jobs, six mm. jobs. Shout out, shout out to Kevin Gates. He's doing six jobs and he's not getting tired at all. At all. And he, he's, he's definitely doing six jobs to appease the GOP. He's doing that to, to, yes. to, to but for us, what you doing? It's not enough, sweetie. Like where, yeah. where, what? You're doing so much for the GOP. You're picking people who do, their resume is trash. And I'm yeah. talking about, they don't even have the skills. They don't have it. There is no PowerPoint <laughs> or any kind of anything that they can do, but you're just taking Shout them anyway. Shout out to Mira You know, <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was messy. I'm sorry. Right. Um, and then it's like, we're doing all of that. And then next thing you know, like, this, this is what you're giving us. I can't, I can't, I guess this is why I get so frustrated with y'all. You, you know, okay I love this. y'all. I mean that with everything in here, my soul. But you guys cannot okay give an excuse for somebody who's doing so much more for the other side than for you and yours. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Simply put, that's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. They they yeah. are doing more for the other. They're doing more. They're doing more for Joe Manchin. They're doing more for one backwoods ignorant rich. <laughs> don't get don't get a twist. He rich, top one percent probably. Wow. Backwoods country ass Bama from West Virginia. They more concerned with satisfying that one white man than all the millions of Americans who need help right now. You should be upset. You should be pissed off with this administration kowtowing to this inbred redneck from West Virginia who don't give a damn about workers. In the meantime, millions of people ain't going to get a check. And that includes millions of children. And they act like somebody making $150,000 in California, is a couple of two, a family of two making $150,000 in California, New York. They, they in the working class. Ask me how I know. Hell, we were making about just a little bit less than that in Boston. We could barely survive. And if we were in Boston right now, working, my wife was working for Harvard. I was working for HubSpot. Still couldn't survive because childcare was $2,500 a month. Hmm. And you mean to tell me that if I was in that same exact situation right now, Joe Manchin, Joe Biden, that you would not give us a check? Y'all better be glad I got rid of Michael Bloomberg and got a little bit of bag between now and then. Because if I was in the situation that y'all putting some of these people in, it would have been me marching up those steps. Burning an American flag because y'all playing with our lives. James, let's go to a quick break, man, because because these they going to make me flip those camera over, man, because sh- you shaking break. the table. This morning. You shaking you the table this it. morning. You sh- Whole listen, shaking the table. Let me go get some tea. I'm going to get some tea. We're we going to reset. I'll be back. Let's reset. Let's go. Oh, let's you reset, shaking we the got table. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to Like It or Not, y'all. Make sure that y'all hit the like, comment, subscribe button, man. Good show. Make sure that you stay tuned. And also, if you want to become a patron, make sure that you go to patreon.com slash the BPD show. Patreon.com slash the BPD show, y'all. Say it again. Say it again. Sorry, so say Shout out to everybody this morning, y'all. I see y'all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, mama. I see you down there in the chat. Y'all mom's getting her vaccine tomorrow and she's nervous. Mama, you got this. Take it back. Say it again. Say it again. Uh, you want my forgiveness, so say it again. You're my thunder, my dog is you just can't go back and make it right Cause it's too late, your time is up Damage just and now it's stuck Cause it's too late, you roll the dice Right church, wrong view, good morning Oh you have to pay the price, yeah in a better place now I'm not gonna worry, no I'm not giving sorry You're gonna be the lonely one I'm in a better place now I'm not gonna worry, no I'm not giving 
Make sure that you get the like it or not with the voices by Action Sprout app. Get the voices by Action Sprout app and download or join our community. Man, this is tongue tied. Join the like it or not community, y'all. You can use group code 213756. 213756. Mark S, good morning. And now you have to pay the price. Oh, I'm in a better place now. I'm not gonna worry. You did. I'm not even sorry. You're gonna be the lonely one. Oh, Rebecca, you need to record that. I'm not gonna worry. No, I'm not even sorry. You say the structure right. get back into it but before we jump back into it i have the pleasure and honor of introducing our next featured artist my god today and when i tell y'all i can't wait i can't wait so singer songwriter leah sheffield aka nikki leah has always loved music for her it isn't just a thing she does it's a way of life it's in her blood her heart her soul Aaliyah's musical influence cover a wide range of uh, denise williams donny hathaway aretha franklin and patty labelle just to name a few while studying film scoring at berkeley college of music shout out to berkeley she began experimenting with fusing genres particularly soul r&b to create her unique keyboard driven style y'all please give it up for nikki Aaliyah. good morning good morning good morning ma'am oh my god 
And I forgot to Good mention, morning. she dropped a hell of a gem on this call, Earth is Ghetto. Yeah. Touched Hi. my spirit when I heard that song. How you doing this morning, ma'am? I'm doing pretty good, you know, for it to be the morning time. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> so thank you for joining us this morning. It's an uh, honor and a pleasure for you to be here, my guys. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, we'll just jump right into it. When, when did you start, it, start getting into this music thing? You know, you were, your voice is amazing. Absolutely love it. I've seen a lot of your videos. Um, I heard your song, Traveling Soldier, and... I want to oh, play it yeah. on the show. My gosh, but man. So t t how did you get started? Um, I got started um, like in high school and middle school, like playing in the marching band and playing clarinet really yes. badly. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been in music since uh, like high school, just obsessed with music since high school. Nice. Uh, ben and I both were in the band. I played baritone all the oh. way from middle school through college. Marching Wildcats, shout out to Pride. Um, okay, and, okay. And Ben played trumpet as well, too. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I, was, <laughs> I dabbled in the choir. <laughs> I, dab, I, I dabbled in, but I, I didn't really start singing till my last year of high school, so I didn't... <laughs> do a lot of um <laughs> i didn't do a lot of quiet stuff until afterwards right so let me ask you what inspired earth is ghetto um the earth being ghetto that's <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but nothing now, else uh, to say <laughs> yeah well uh so like the song is literally just me when i was writing it i was literally walking down the street from my cor the corner store by my house which was on 15th street at the time. And I was reading the news and looking at everything that was going on. And I was just like, earth is really ghetto. And the lyrics just flowed out of me while I'm walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. Amen. <laughs> so, for real, I mean, for real. <laughs> it was based on real life events. So. <laughs> I feel that. Um, what do you have coming up next? I know that uh, you have an album coming out. What's what's going on, man? We need some music. I need to be able to play you all day long. <laughs> well, I have. I do have an album coming out. Um, it's a joint. It's a joint project with a band that I was in um, about four years ago called Sold Out NYC. So it's not a solo album, but um, I like to say we recorded that when Obama was still in the White House. So it has a different um, sound, but we it took us a while to get the funds and all of that to be able to fully have it produced the way we wanted to because it was a live band and all of that but it should be out sometime in the next few weeks it's just taking a little bit yes. putting it online and stuff so that should right. be out really and now that's the band that you played with um traveling soldier with and when i tell yes. you they're an awesome band man oh my gosh oh, yeah. I've, they're, traveling soldier man last night it took me through there. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> that yeah, that song will definitely be on there. And um, the person that arranged the music is a good friend of mine named Olivier Court, and he's really, really good at bringing out sounds and songs that just need to the song the the things that songs need to amplify them. And he's really good at that. And the people okay. playing on the songs are really creative and and talented too. So. Yeah, that's, that's they're, awesome. They're all awesome. great. All right, Ben, did you you want to um you got a question, Ben, that you want to get in real quick? <laughs> hey. <laughs> and 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 when I sing it, I I be like America's ghetto or America's a shithole. All these kind of things just come to my mind, but you really you really just kind of put that into besides just the song like how did it do for you like it it, it puts you on our radar like did it really help you out in your career did you get the connections that you needed from it talk to us about that um it's definitely helping out in my career and taking me places that i didn't think that it would um it's like mm. a lot of wheels turning right now it's, hey, um, yes so it's it's it like when I wrote that song of and when I was uploading these videos and stuff online, I wasn't expecting anything to happen or anything to do go with it because I'm like 32 and I've been doing music for years and you know you mm. just 
after a while, you're just like, okay, I'm gonna just keep putting out music because that's just what I do anyway. So that it definitely um, changed the course of my life. So you said you were living on um, 15th. You know, you used to live on 15th. And you said when you used to live on 15th, that's what you said. And then I, 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 I just, I believe that you've been blessed enough to move from 15th since you, um, well, since yeah. you created that song. <laughs> I, I moved. I moved to another block. Okay. <laughs> not a number. Not a number. Not a number street. You know what they say about the number streets. But right. not a number. <laughs> um, I moved to another block. Um, and when I say 15th Street, that 15th Street was in Mexico. So a lot of people think I'm talking about um, America. And that's the reason why mm. I ended up saying Earth as a whole because I was in Mexico and it was still ratchet. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, it, 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 it's I've definitely moved from the neighborhood and uh, getting around a bit. I'm, I'm not really settled down right now. I got like my, my makeshift studio that I carry with me everywhere. I walk around with a, a MIDI keyboard, a piano everywhere I go. So you are true. You are a true artist. Now, exactly. Artistry. We heard that you about to play a little something and sing a little something. And I, I feel like enough is enough. I want the people to hear what we've heard. And if they haven't, cause they've been under a rock, if they haven't heard that talent from you, I think this is the time. <laughs> let's okay. let, let us see and hear. Okay. Drop okay. I'll so play it now. All right. Let's see. All right. We, I think it's going to work. Hold on. Ah, there we go. There you go. Oh, earth is ghetto. I wanna leave. Beat me up. I'm out on the street by the corner store. You know the one on Fifteenth got a bright shirt on, so I'm easy to see. I've been down here stranded indefinitely. I can't reach my This real quick before she give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, drop them lines the in the lyrics. chat, y'all. Please, the, y'all. The my god, lyrics, the lyrics, especially on the that lyrics. second verse, it made me feel like I had to yeah. sit down because at first it was like, Earth is getting I, then the second verse had me like, mm, you really mm. sitting down thinking about what she was saying, you, you yeah, really thinking about, thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, right? a good, that's a good Let, thing, that's a good thing yeah. that makes you think. You need um yeah. we we need more more music that makes you think or more music or oh, well I, the quote that Nina Simone says and it says the artist's job is to write about the times and to write about things that are mm. going on in the world at and and, and and to bring them to light and stuff so it's it's good yeah. that people see that or hear that in yes. that song. Yeah. Oh, thank you for man. doing that. Like you, you thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, it's good thank that you. we can see it, and thank you for doing that. And uh, I, I'm happy. Thank you for getting her on, Bubba. I'm such a fan yeah. of hers. Hey, thank you me very too. much for having me. I really yeah. appreciate it. 
And now, Nikki, tell everybody how you can be reached, how they can support you. Give, I need everything. I want you to tell everybody how to get up with you so they can hear your music, uh, donate to you, support you. We need all of that. Okay, um, so you can reach me at Nikki Aaliyah on Instagram, and that has links to everything. But if you don't have Instagram, you can find me at www.earthisghettoiwantoleave.com. Hey! Yes! <laughs> Yeah. So uh, or or NikkiAlia dot com and you can find me on all all social media platforms and um it'll lead you to my YouTube Instagram everything so that's how you that's can reach up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick Elia, for being here this morning. Uh, please come back anytime. Me. I can't wait to have you back on here to sing another song. Uh, yeah. We are waiting, y'all. My yeah. God, today. Thank you so much, sister. All right. Have a good day. All right. Well, y'all give it up, y'all. Drop them lines in the chat, y'all. Pride family. Drop the lines in the chat. Y'all, Nikki and Leah, y'all. Thank you so much. And like thank it or not, y'all, we'll be right back. Hey. Woo! My gosh, today, man. <laughs> I had to stop the music for that man that was epic shout out to nikki and Liz again for joining us this morning y'all awesome 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 we hope y'all enjoyed that so make sure that y'all drop them lines in the chat make sure that y'all reshare the stream and replay it everything okay y'all i could really use a change of scenery yeah everybody's smoking all the greenery yeah close the matches they were handed down to me but i'm still fly i'm still fly shout out to everybody that's in the chat room y'all thank you so much for joining today I'm everybody that's streaming facebook twitch you YouTube, Twitter, shout out to everybody, y'all. It could all be worse. I could be a hater like you. It could all be My theme worse. song. Supposed to make the man, but that poison's gonna kill you. From the inside out. So right now. Say it with your chest now. Say it with your chest I'm now. Young, I'm free. Ain't nobody take me here. And now, it's my time to ride it out. Rebecca, what? It's my time. It's my time to ride it out. I'm young. I'm free. Can't nobody take me here. And now, it's my time to ride it out. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time to ride it out. It's my time. Cheers to all the haters, cause you proved to me yeah. That rising to the top was my destiny yeah. And you can see whatever from behind me But I'm still fly, I'm still fly, I know I'm still fly, I'm still fly, let's go It could all be worse, I could be a hater like you It could oh. all be worse Who's to make the man, but that boy that's gonna kill you from the inside out It's time To say it with your chest now Say it with your chest I'm now young, I'm free <laughs> Can't no Hey, I appreciate that getting the pitchforks I'm walking <laughs> Anti-anxiety feel, man That's actually not bad at all I appreciate time. that It's my time It's my time to ride it. I'm young Anna, thank you so much. Can't nobody take me here. This is Rebel Day, and it's called it's Still Fly. It's my time, it's my time, it's my time, it's my time to ride it now. It's your time, it's your time. Oh, 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 oh. If you're on the bus, say yeah. Yeah. If you're on the train, say yeah. Yeah. If you got a walk, say yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going somewhere. Yeah. Young or old, I really don't care. Yeah. Life has never really been fair. Thank you, people. Are well, put your fist up in the air. Yeah. Say yeah. yeah. I'm young. I'm free. Can't nobody take me here and now.
I see. <laughs> but I am so happy to have Representative Renita Shannon on the show today. Georgia State Representative Renita Shannon is a Democrat who has served in the Georgia State House as a representative since 2017. She's originally from Florida, where I'm from. And um, on Monday, Republican lawmakers in Georgia have passed legislation that would roll back voting access. It would require a photo ID for absentee voting, limit the amount of time voters have to request an absentee ballot, restrict where ballot drop boxes Mm. could be located and where they could be accessed, and limit early voting hours on weekends. And to add to that, criminalize giving folks waiting in voting lines food and water. Mm. But on Monday... Representative Shannon vigorously opposed these ongoing attempts at voter suppression happening in Georgia right now. She said, in part, Republicans, we see your white supremacy. We will never get tired of fighting it. And most importantly, we will defeat it. Come on. Let's take a look at her full speech. It's been said that these changes are needed because confidence in our elections was damaged after the November election. But my question is, damaged by who or damaged to who? There were simply not all of these questions about the integrity about voting by mail when it was mostly Republicans, largely white seniors, using this method. But now that black and brown voters have used vote to mail to show up in ways like they never have before, Mm. now there are questions about the integrity of vote by mail. It's pathetically obvious to anyone paying attention that when Trump lost the November election and Georgia flipped control of the U.S. Senate to Democrats shortly after, Republicans got the message that they were in a political death spiral, and now they are doing anything they can to silence the voices of black and brown voters specifically Mm -hmm. because they largely powered these wins. Mm. Republicans, we saw you elect Trump to the presidency of the United States. Then you ran him for re-election, and then when he lost, You spent months trying to invalidate the votes from places where mostly black and brown voters showed up and showed out against your candidate. House Bill 531 is just another attempt to silence these voters, maintain minority rule, and that's just not democracy. So in closing, we see your white supremacy. We will never get tired of fighting it. And most importantly, we will defeat it, i.e. the whale. That's it. That's a word. Mm-hmm. Representative Shannon, that is that is very much a word. Um, could you talk about the voter suppression happening in uh, here in Georgia and how you stood there on the floor and, and, and said what you 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 did what had to be done that day. Yeah. But you, could you talk about what pushed you to that moment? Oh, sure. Well, a a few things. Um, Since I came into the House in 2017, I've served on the Governmental Affairs Committee, and that deals with election law. And every single year, I've seen Republicans put through voter suppression bills. So they've been at it for a long time. 
And it's so clear what they are doing. And because of the amount of respectability politics in the chamber, where people don't really don't want to call out Republicans for their racism um, and talk about the animus behind a lot of the bills, you know, that's something that I'm known for. And so I felt like this was the perfect time to really talk about the culmination of what's been going on with the types of bills that they've been trying to pass. The reality is they are always talking about local control. You can walk in the chamber and say it's Monday and they will say only if a local government says it's Monday. And now we're seeing lately that they are finding all these ways for the state to take over local governments. And they say, well, we have to take over when local governments get out of control. But the question is, what 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 determines when a local government gets out of control? Is it when the demographics get out of control? Because that's what I'm seeing. So we're having more black and brown mayors, more folks of color getting elected to local governments. And you're seeing Republicans come with bill after bill after bill to take away that power and keep it with the state, which is all Republican control, which is mostly a party of just white men. Mm. Yeah, this that. that. <laughs> I and, and you said as much on the floor. You called it for what it was, white supremacy. And when these methods of voting worked perfectly fine for older white people, um, they were perfectly fine with these methods. And now there's a concerted effort by, and not just in not just in Georgia, mind you. It's it's, and I know you know this, but for the audience's sake, this is starting to spread around the country. And so their reaction to black people using the democratic process and the tools at our disposal is to rip those tools away from us. Is it, is, is there anybody else who's calling this for what it is? Like this is a blatant attack of white supremacy on the voting rights, particularly of black people in Georgia. You, like you said, they've been doing this for a minute. They suppressed and uh, Brian Kemp, that's how he got to the, uh, the governor's mansion. And so they're going to keep doing this. Is there anybody else on our side who is calling it for what it is? And what is the strategy to actually push back against it? I would say not that I would say not that directly um, calling it out. And that's largely because the local media as well as national media, you know, they don't really like to cover people when they are too direct, especially when you start to talk about white supremacy and systemic racism. So we like I said, there's still a lot of respectability politics in the chamber that kind of does scare people away from um, really calling this stuff out the way it is. But as you mentioned before, it's happening all across the country and we need to make it plain for folks what is happening. To your point, a lot of the things they're trying to roll back right now with voting are things that they put in place. So, for example, they were the ones who said you should have to have an excuse to absentee vote. They did that. And that was when it was mostly white seniors using the absentee voting process. Now, you know, there's a question about don't we need to do something about absentee voting. So mm-hmm. the whole thing is just ridiculous. You know, it's it's completely their candidate lost. That's the end of the story. Mm-hmm. And they need to get over it. Mm. Yeah, they're trying to find all the excuses in the world. What kills me is the criminalization of uh, giving voters in line the food and water. So they're trying to find every single thing to attack and abuse. Now, um, I, I, like I said, I heard your voice. You did what had to be done in that room. And But how are you mobilizing locally in Georgia to educate everyone and help them understand what's going on and what their rights are um, when it comes yeah. to voter suppression? So, and that's one of the reasons why my speeches are so direct and so to the point um, and in plain English about what is going on, um, because people do need to be able to understand easily what's going on. There are advocacy groups that are um, keep trying to keep folks informed. Um, right now, we are trying to get the business community to stand up and say that they don't want this type of voter suppression in Georgia. We've seen the business community stand up before. We saw them stand up, um, you know, every time that Republicans have tried to pass a religious freedom bill, which is targeted at... Um, you know, harming the LGBTQ community. So we know they have the capacity to stand up. They just pick and choose when they want to do it. And we are holding everyone accountable who will not stand with us because we know that this is an attack on black and brown voters. And if you do not stay in the gap with us right now, we will remember this. We have a very long memory and we will remember it. And I'll be one of those that will continue to talk about it. Absolutely. You look at the uh, the unfortunate nature of of the politics here in Georgia right now. Uh, Republicans control the state house, the state Senate, as well as the governor's seat. Um, what do you what do you feel in terms of the likelihood of this passing um, all the way or sign, being signed into law rather? And then what do we do afterwards? Because Republicans, they have no compunction whatsoever. They have no regard for hypocrisy. They don't care how it looks. They don't care if they play. They play for keeps. And so if they have to burn everything down, down to get this legislation through, they will. So how do we respond? That's exactly right. They are going to pass this bill 
Um, they've already passed it in the House. It heads over to the Senate. Uh, they're definitely going to pass it because they are set on maintaining white minority rule. They understand that the demographics of this country has changed and they cannot handle it. And like I said before, their party is mostly made up of the people who have been able to vote for the longest. And that is white men. And those are the yeah. policies that they reflect. So they want to keep that power there. Um, so, yeah, I think that they will pass it in Georgia. What we need is for Democrats to get tough. You cannot play with these. Oh, you can't play by the same rules that we have forever. We need help at the federal level. They need to pass a bill that will put back a strong Voting Rights Act, um, H.R. 4. A lot of people talking about H.R. 1, the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act. And that's great. And I'm glad that that has already passed the House. But we really, really need H.R. 4, which will right. put states like back under federal preclearance. That's what we need. So they need to kill the filibuster and use the power that black and brown voters pretty much, you know, black and brown voters gave to them. That's what they need to do. Mm. And do you feel like um, at this moment, um, being a leader and having the right to, you know, express your voice and push these, these, these out there, do you feel like you, you're being heard in, in, in the mm. room? Do you feel like what you're saying and what you're doing is making a difference? I do, because it's interesting. Republicans um, really like to, they don't like to be called out on their racism. They don't. And I'm not saying that Democrats are perfect. You know, racism is bipartisan. So I'm not, I'm not saying you know, there, there's no racism on the Democratic side. But what I am saying is Republicans go out of their way to be grossly racist when it comes to anything having to do with black and brown voters. And they don't like to be called out on that. Again, it's the respectability politics, that culture, mm -hmm. keeping that in place where you shouldn't really talk about that. They don't even want you to say Republican in the chamber. Well, that's who's <laughs> doing it. And so you wow. saw at the beginning, I quoted the Speaker of the House. When I said the quote about how they were saying something has to be done or, you know, Republicans or conservatives can't win. And I said the that's Speaker represented from Blue Ridge, that's the Speaker of the House. So he's sitting right behind me. Thank you for giving me the mic. Now we're going to talk about what you said and what you all are doing. Yes. Mm. To what extent? See, see, you you actually said it in the uh, when you first started speaking. You you spoke about the respectability politics, right? And and these are the games that they play, right? They don't want you to say Republican because they don't want you to identify who the culprits are. They don't want you to call them out by their position because they don't want you to call out who the culprits are, right? Mm -hmm. And so they have these, 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 these arcane rules of respectability uh, in the U.S. Senate, in the U.S. House, just like they have it replicated across the different uh, states. To what extent is breaking through that actually a part of the strategy, right? So calling them out is one thing and it's meaningful, but does it have the impact or can it even break through all of that respectability that is a way of keeping these things? And I just want to highlight it with one more thing before you answer. Um, the fact that Georgia is able to do this, you brought up H.R. 4, and I'm so glad you did, because if you think about what happened under Shelby versus Holder, you realize the reason the reason they're able to do this is because there are no more checks and balances from the federal level on ter in terms of, of Georgia. So now you have no help on the federal level. Right. And then you have all of these arcane rules of respectability where your hands are tied and your voice is tied. Like, how do you break through that noise and all of the opposition? Well, I think it's a few things. I think a few things. I think it has to start with elections. Black and brown people, please stop electing people who are afraid to say black and brown and talk about systemic racism <laughs> apologetically in their campaigns. Confidence does not increase after you get elected. It's very difficult mm. because you're in a chamber where people do not want you to be speaking up. So please mm. stop electing people who don't bring the fire when they're campaigning, because I promise you, when they get into the, these chambers, there is no shortage of lobbyists and external forces that are trying to make them feel like it's completely inappropriate to call out systemic racism and talk mm. about what we need in our community. So that's where I think a lot of this starts. Um, to your point about breaking the rules, I mean, I came from community organizing before being elected um, in my personal time. And, you know, I definitely there's been times where I've certainly broken the rules and I don't regret it. When Georgia tried to pass mm. a bill to outlaw abortion, I said, I'm not going to let them just pass this like some tax bill nobody cares about. I went down to the well. We don't have filibuster, but I intentionally spoke so long that it, I forced the speaker to physically remove me from the well. So, mm. yeah, I mean. The thing is, is that we we have got to continue to elect people who understand that these bills that are being passed are not just words on a paper. 
These bills have impact on people's lives, particularly black and brown folks. And if you are not looking at all that you do in that way as an elected official, then people are really going to get hurt by policy. So that's what it mm. boils down. And you said something. You said that you were um, you, before this. You came from community organizing. Yeah. And um, I know that on on Twitter, I see people saying, "Hey, I was you know walking by while you guys were out there, you know, making your voices heard." Was that you, Representative Shannon? And you was like, "That was me." So this is something that <laughs> you that you've been doing. And 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 so what what can we expect from you moving forward? Like yeah. after this whole thing, are you going to be st- uh, continuing the organizing, continuing educating your community? What can we expect from you? Oh, sure. Um, You know, I always tell people that I only ran because of the issues and I only stay because of the issues. The person who was in the seat before me was a slightly conservative Democrat. Very, very nice guy. Um, But he was not out and unapologetic about really making the change that we need to see for um, black and brown communities. And it was interesting because his dad actually was Grady on Sanford and Son. I love that. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I had never run for public office before, and this is a majority black district that I represent. And I was just like, we have to have people who are unafraid to talk about our issues. And so the thing is, is that I took my community organizing experience along with my business experience, which is what I was doing for a career, uh, business development before being elected, put that together, ran against him and was able to unseat him. And I ran as a strong progressive talking about issues that we care about, like police accountability, voting rights, things like that. So for me, it would be a continuation of talking about the issues in a very direct way that keeps people engaged and people know that they can expect the direct truth from me. Yes. And and I I have one more question. I don't want to hold you too much longer, but like you, you, you keep hitting it dead at center mass, right? Like it doesn't mean that these old politicians or even some of these young politicians who pick up respectability politics, particularly from the black community, doesn't mean that they're bad people. Mm -hmm. But to me, it feels like they're unequipped for the times because Republicans ain't playing. They, they playing for keeps. Right. That's right. And so my question to you would be, how would you advise this next generation of leadership to be able to get in these spaces speaking truth to power because there's a huge like we don't only deal with respectability politics from white supremacy and white supremacists and racists the biggest impediment to this is oftentimes from the black community who don't want us out here speaking the way that we speak could you so could you speak to that real quick yeah but you know what we've seen the difference and when you look at the folks who led uh black lives matter who continue to lead it Folks my age um, respect and appreciate all that has been done before us, but we understand that in this time, something different is needed. And so I do think that it's time for us to pick up the torch um, and really be able to lead in this time. So people need to run campaigns, um, talk about the issues that they care about. And also, you know, if you don't want to run for office, make sure you reach out to your representative and let them know that you want them to bring the fire and really fight for them. Because a lot of this, I think, is, you know, constituents letting their elected officials know this is what we expect of you. And we are going to be watching to make sure that you are fighting for us as if you understand that this is the last, you know, grip. This is the last breath of Mm. white supremacy. We are trying to dismantle in government and we want you to bring that fire. And so, I mean, that's really a lot of it. Amen. This was really good. I'm so glad that I was introduced to you. um, And, you know, thank you to our viewers who do give us um, good, you know, insight and saying, hey, you need to interview this woman or whoever. (laughs) Um, And and, and they brought us to you and they got us connected. And uh, is there any way that you want um, or let our uh, followers and our viewers know how they can find you and where they can follow you on social media? Sure. Well, I want to say I have been following uh, the work of both of you for a while. So I really am Mm -hmm. honored to be here happy to come back anytime, but thank you for having me. Um, I am on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Renita Shannon. So that's two T's and Renita. Please, 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 everybody help us push at the federal level um, to get in place a serious voting rights act because we really need the help and we can't do it without that. That's it. Well, Representative Shannon, you just made me blush like you've been following our work for real. That, just, <laughs> that made me feel good. Thank you. Thank you so 
blush. I blush like, too. I, I'm not gonna lie. I, like I as much as I can blush, I blush. Thank you so much. It's, it's one big community. Um, but then you know, yeah. I'm so happy that we're connecting the dots and getting with each other. Yeah. Ben and I, who are here in Georgia, are definitely gonna help and push that so that we yeah. can get these things moving forward. The more that we connect, the more that we can help each other out. Thank you once again, Representative Shannon. And we'll be right back, you guys, with more like it or not. Shout out again to Representative Renita, or excuse me, shout out again to Representative Renita Shannon. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome, awesome, awesome interview. Oh my gosh. Y'all, this, this this show has been amazing this week. My gosh. Let's let's talk about it. This show is amazing. Make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe, y'all. This show is amazing. It's like in a nice y'all. Let's go. Tell them I need my money right now Brought me the juice, they stole out my crown Michael, what's going on? Good morning Sorry to tell you Shout out you. to the Lions Den, y'all Lions Den family, I hope y'all are having a good time back there Shout out to the I'm pride, y'all Priscilla, good morning My energy, my energy I don't got much, don't be wasting all my energy I keep it tight, don't let nobody get close to me My heart is right, don't question my Sensation, good morning No, I thought we would be just fine And I thought your heart was like mine But let me find out You've been going around throwing shots Running plots, come on, man Trying to block my blessings And only for comparisons from me won't be from me But you're not really that dark I'ma go through <laughs> Just to go through But pay me what you owe me for I make what you can say by me True You wanna be dark skin so, so bad <laughs> Right now Brought me the juice They stole out my crown Alicia Sorry Good morning ma'am I know my value I'm gonna recoup it Don't waste my loyalty My loyalty I let you in back then Because I couldn't see But now it's clear Brenda Johnson would greatly appreciate that My intuition ain't ever lied Hey y'all, if y'all wanna make sure That you become a supporter Of Like It or Not Make sure that you join our Patreon, y'all Patreon.com slash the BPD show Patreon.com slash the BPD show, y'all Support the show Become a patron Get ad-free exclusive content and also be part of the Lions Den, the VIP room, and patron parties. That's right by me. Yo, want to miss that. One coming up tomorrow night. You're not going to miss it. It's going to be off the chain, y'all. <laughs> Melody. Emily, what's going on, sir? Right now. Promise you stay stole out my crown. Sorry to tell you, so key. I know my value. I'm gonna recoup it. Don't waste my. You make sure that y'all are hitting that like button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Make sure that you share, comment, and subscribe, y'all. It's like it or not. <laughs> Purple Rain Hearts, right? <laughs> you saw me. I've been waiting all night. Watch you blow a mile. Please don't come over. Cause you're not so bad. Yeah. Now you know that ain't right. If you knew you was coming over, that would be a problem. Yeah. If our friends only three was going on, loving, they would try to solve it. Solve it, yeah. Pixie, yeah. come on, you gotta make sure that you're enough, Pixie. Do what they do. It stays between me and you. Me and you. Goku, shout out to you, brother. What's going on? 
Chuck Diesel. Shout out to the moderators, y'all. We see y'all. Appreciate y'all. And make sure that you get the Voices by Action Sprout app downloaded, y'all. Get the Voices by Action Sprout app downloaded. That way you can join the Like or Not community and be able to post pictures, stories, whatever you have, and we'll get it played on there. They haven't played any because they haven't sent anything. So make sure that you get your submissions in and we'll get it put on Like It or Not. Once you get the app downloaded, use group code 213-756. 213 Five, six, y'all like it or not? You was coming over, that would be a problem. If our friends knew undercover love and they were trying to sell well, She was just going too. And now it's time for a like it or not favorite. <laughs> I told y'all this is the like it or not favorite. Slide to the left, slide to the right. Come on, come on, come on. Nat, hey, I Courtney. Be the Nat squad. Shout out to the Nat squad in the building, y'all. Courtney, what's going on? Give me your favorite, some digging your flavor. Yeah, yeah. Cause if I feel like you're feeling 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 like you're fee
And we're going to move on because I can stay on that up forever. But <laughs> on right. Wednesday. You do have some news to come. And we got some news and another guest. So it's in your hands, Rebecca. Another guest. So right after this, we're going to um, have a old friend back on, and that's going to be great. But I really want to go into this Cori Bush conversation. On Wednesday, the House debated a bill on police reform called the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. This bill had previously passed the House last year by a 236 to 181 vote but it was not considered by the Republican-led Senate and was opposed by, of course, at the time, President Trump. Mm. Uh, the House is voted again on this, has voted again on this bill last night. And during the floor debate, mm. okay, on the George Floyd Act, Cori Bush gave this passionate, real, in-your-face speech, and I need you guys to drop everything you're doing right now and take a yeah. listen. Madam Speaker, First of all, we shouldn't be talking about good police and bad police. There should just be police that are doing their job to serve and protect the people. So let's make that clear. There's no such thing as good police. There's no good nurse. When you go get food, you don't go look for the, this place has a good chef, this one has a bad chef. I'm going to go where the bad chef is. We don't need, we, we don't need this good police, bad police. We need police if we're going to have police, but I'll move on. Madam Speaker, St. Louis and I rise on behalf of the more than 788 people who have been killed by law enforcement over the last year. We rise 30 years to the day after the ruthless beating of Rodney King. We rise in honor of Breonna Taylor, who was brutally gunned down by police in her home last March. We rise for George Floyd and all those who have been killed by police since his torture and murder. Those names. William Burgess, Mark Brewer, Dion Johnson, Tony McDade, Rashar Brooks, Modesto Reyes, Reuben Smith, David McAtee, Kamal Flowers, Robert Harris, Joseph Denton, Vincent Truitt, Cynthia Pierce, Jeremy Southern, Angelo Grooms, Amir Johnson, Casey Goodman, the more than 100 people whose names have been withheld by police, Hakeem Littleton, I will not... The gentleman from New York reserves, the gentleman from Ohio is recognized. Time is expired. Order. 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 Gentlewoman is no longer recognized. The gentleman from New York reserves, the gentleman from Ohio is recognized. So the House passed the George Floyd Ooh. Justice and Policing Act over nine months after George Floyd's death by a vote of 220 to 212. The bill would ban police chokeholds, eliminate qualified immunity, and require data collection on all police encounters. On Wednesday evening, Congresswoman Bush tweeted out after she was appointed uh, as the uh, the vice chair of the subcommittee. She said, 2014, we started a movement for justice in Ferguson. Today, we were appointed vice chair of the subcommittee that oversees policing. The fight for black lives doesn't just have a seat at the table. We're mm. continuing to lead the way. And just for a little bit of context on that, Cori Bush was appointed vice chair of the House Committee on the Judici Judiciary's Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security. So this itself is history. I, like I was um, discussing with Ben in our backstage, um, in our virtual backstage, I don't understand why this isn't news. I dropped this in our producer's uh, chat yesterday and they couldn't find where it it was. They thought it was something that she said before. I'm like, nah, that was done today, just a few moments ago. Now, if this was somebody else saying some BS, one of the uh, uh, white representatives or whoever about, about Dr. Seuss, which has been in the news cycle for about two days now, that would have made right. news. But this is such an important topic, such an important conversation. Corey Bush being vice chair of this particular committee, committee that can, that will, mm. that will change so much. That will help in a changing lot. so much. Do you know how long it took us to get here? Do you guys understand how long it took mm. us to get here? Hmm. She was, she was somebody on the front lines in Ferguson. That's it. And now right. she's here at creating the the whole thing, leading the charge and making changes. This is what we need to say, see, and this is what needs to be news. And these are the people who should be celebrated. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you, and you're so right. Like they're talking about Dr. Seuss 
on the news. On the news. Like the number one like thing that people somebody feel. jumped in like, like somebody jumped in my, my mentions about uh oh not my mentions, but on Facebook saying, Ben, like, you're not upset about the Mr. Potato Head no longer being a mister. <laughs> I'm like, is this really what media and 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 politics has become? They would rather you be upset about the <laughs> Gender of a potato toy, not even a damn potato, <laughs> but a potato <laughs> toy. <laughs> then all the people who are killed by police officers every single year. They want you to be upset about this imagined war on Dr. Seuss than actual lives being taken by police officers every single year. In fact, Tucker Carlson is going to do a segment tonight, I guarantee you, about the atrocities of cancel culture because we're canceling or whoever is canceling Dr. Seuss and because of Mr. Potato. They are more concerned with that. And then what he's going to do is blame, blame drug use for George Floyd's death versus the fact that we saw the video of Derek Chauvin kneeling on his neck for eight and a half minutes. So Rebecca, I think that's the only context and the lens that we need to really consider this through because of course she's speaking truth to power, but she's been speaking truth to power and, since she and, was in the streets on the front line, like you said, like she's a nurse, she's a minister, she's an activist, she's done all these things, she's been speaking truth to power and now she's in the halls of Congress with the position of power and she's actually acting on it and they got us out here talking about a damn potato head. Damn that's America in 2021. And the, But it also shows us how... <laughs> I dare say, racist the media is mm. and how they will pacify the people. Uh, the, and this, this, this is a good example of how the Democrats run. They'll mm. pacify certain people and make it That's look it. good in the fluff over here. Understand yep. that they can be a little racist and they can be, they don't want to be so radical and they don't want to be X, Y, and Z. And if they do mention this, it's going to place people like Joe Biden at the forefront of what are you doing? Because you got this woman over here holding it down. What yeah. are you saying? What are you doing? How are you doing it? You know? So this is why I think maybe mainstream media misses the mark. And, yeah. um, you know, this is her first term. She's been yeah. pushing. She's been so vocal. People, I'm pretty sure people want her to shut up and saying, you need to get hazed. Like, you need to go mm, through the process. Right. Only in her first term, within days right. of her being there, she had to experience a terrorist attack. Right. And then she still had to pull up to work and still come speak about things like this and right. start up a, 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 a committee like this and mm. and and be rebellious, something yeah. that is probably not common on that floor, at least by black and brown people. OK, right. until right. just recently or and then we're getting the first hand look. We've never been this so connected to our congresswomen or our, yeah. our other representatives like That's we fact. have been now because we got we can see them and we should be following them and we should be hearing what they're saying. And this news of her heading this committee should be something that is mainstream right. news. It should be everywhere. But since it's not, it's going to be right here on Like It or Not. And I'm glad <laughs> that we were able to educate you guys on who she is and what she's doing and and how it's going to help all of us black and brown people as it, when it comes to policing. Now, she said something very clear. Now, she may have want she may want to do away with policing. But if we're going to have policing, right. we are going to do we're going to have we're not going to have good and bad police. We're going to have police that police. do their job. Hello. Why, that Because why are they OK? Why are they OK with the idea of good cops and bad cops? Right. I'm glad she actually just kind of blew that dichotomy out the water. Like why, especially when all cops are licensed to kill, like <laughs> we won't put up with a bad chef. Y'all want us to put up with a bad cop who can come in our community and gun us down and get away with it. And we can't hold them accountable because qualified immunity. Right. So, so it should be completely unacceptable Rebecca, like you're saying, it should be completely unacceptable that we simply are OK with the idea of good cops and bad cops, because if we can't have all got good cops, then we don't need to have no cops because nobody should have a license to come in our neighborhoods and gun us down. And we just sit back and say, oh, there's a few bad apples. Yeah, that few bad apples just kill somebody. Hmm. Right. I think a good person actually to uh, to discuss the media component of this actually is our next guest, um, Professor Matt Sinkowitz. Uh, Professor Sinkowitz is a longtime uh, supporter of this show in every iteration, whether it was Like It or Not the very first time, the Benjamin Dixon show, as well as this version of Like It or Not. He is also the chair of the Boston College Communication Department and associate professor of communication and international studies. His research focuses on the intersection of media studies 
American soft power and foreign policy. I want to, uh, Professor, first of all, thanks so much for being here. How are you, man? Oh, I'm doing all right, Ben. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. I want to dig in on your, your particular area of focus in terms of media, because it really is a shame that we almost have two entirely different coexisting worlds where in one world, they're still arguing about the war, of, uh, war on Christmas. Um, they're still <laughs> arguing about the war on Mr. Potato Head and the war on Dr. Seuss. But in the real world, we have people who are dying from COVID-19. We have people who need checks. We have people who are victims of police brutality and police violence. And there's, there's just a little glimmer of the real world represented on television occasionally when it benefits their, uh, their ratings. Talk to us in terms of, of why. Yeah. Not just the how. I think we understand the how because there's money behind it. But why do we have these two parallel worlds where the truth can barely break through and they're talking about Mr. Potato Head? Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely a longstanding structural issue. It's not something that goes away, but it's it's very important to remind ourselves that uh, this is not a naturally occurring thing. Uh, there's a system, there's a way in which uh, we have set up to do media, to understand media, and to regulate media, which does get us into a situation where, um, you know, a, a private company deciding to sell some books that nobody wants to buy anyway uh, is more important uh, in terms of the way we receive news. I mean, this is, uh, it, it is an outrage, and, and your, your outrage is, is totally called for. Of course. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, th th there's no question there's disproportion here. You know, where does it come from? I think it's, it's always important to, you know, think back to what are the structures here. Uh, we have a situation where, you know, a long time ago, uh, we uh, or the government, depending on how you look at it, right, gave, uh, uh, you know, capitalism the news. Right. That was this way we decided to do it here. Uh, and then capitalism over time decided to turn the news into entertainment. All right, uh, which is how that works, right? For better or for worse, capitalism finds things to turn profitable. Entertainment is more profitable uh, than news and discourse, right? Then we had technology that came along, you know, uh, eventually leading to where we are with social media, right? Technology made entertainment personalized, made it immersive. And then capitalism discovered that the, you know, negative emotions are what are, you know, most able to uh, get people personally immersed. So you get the system with starts with sort of giving up on the idea that uh, discussion, debate, or information uh, should be in any way separated from our general consumerist system. Uh, and then the technology eventually catches up to us, right? It was a mistake to probably go in that direction in the first place, at least as radically as we did. Uh, and we certainly did not see the way in which, you know, our computing power, the algorithms, the way in which uh, social media is going to operate uh, can just feed us these little, little sort of uh, very small windows into the world uh, that are optimized for what they call engagement, right? But so much of that is reinforcement. So much of that is mm. uh, heightened emotions, right? And that's, that's where we are. Um, I mean, it seems, it, it asks a weird psychological question, right? How could people be more upset about a potato, a pretend potato, uh, than about uh, the the issues that affect people's lives, uh, but in fact they are, and the the uh, you know the, the the computer finds that and feeds it to them. Um, and you know you could psycholo psychologize why, right? Uh, it's easier to think about that than these hard questions. Get angry about something that you don't have to be scared of. I think that's where we're at. Uh, yeah, the, those the structures, right? The, the way you broke it down in terms of how we got here, capitalism found out that it was extremely profitable to make news entertainment, right? Here's the thing. At this point, it's going to destroy us. At this point, the algorithm prioritizing our anger, our emotions, and also all the, taking us down rabbit holes that are destructive, right? So it's not just, it's not just taking us down. The algorithm doesn't take us down uh, rabbit holes of anger and frustration around systemic injustices and the environment and how do we make the world better. These algorithms yeah. that are making trillions of dollars for Silicon Valley are taking people down rabbit holes that reinforces destructive behaviors. So how do we break free when the technology has compounded the situation to make it even worse than what even Marcuse was talking about when he was complaining about the entertainment complex? Now, imagine the entertainment complex with algorithms that make trillions of dollars in wealth. No, I mean, you're right. And it's like a, it's a really big question. If I had a, if I had a simple answer, right. To, you know, <laughs> I'd be screaming it, right. Uh, it, it's incredibly complicated, but, but you're right. I mean, and, and I think it's it, the way you put it, it's nice. There's a certain kind of 
rage and anger that goes well, uh, but it's not what you might call, well, righteous or, or justified, right? Uh, it's these things you can be angry about, but not have it impact your life really, mm -hmm. right? Mm. You can be really angry about the potato. Again, I don't, this is beyond me. I don't even know how to like take it seriously, <laughs> uh, but you can be angry about it, right? And you can get really angry about it, but does it like impact anything else in your day? Right. Does mm. it does it make you have to think about your life decisions? Does it make you have to engage with anything else? Not really. It just lets you be angry. Right. There's no mm. sort of action item. I mean, maybe you write some tweet or whatever, but there's nothing there. Right. And that's the kind of thing. It's the perfect balance. Right. It gets people's emotions up, but it doesn't disturb the system in any way. Right. It doesn't mm. disturb uh, uh, the rest of their lives. Right. Whereas, uh, you know, getting angry about things that should make you angry. One of the problems is that it really, you know, makes you, it makes it hard to sleep at night or makes it hard to go to work or to keep oh. doing the thing you're doing. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. so, OK, that's the problem. I think you you put it nicely. I'm trying to sort of contextualize it, it makes sense. You know what to do. I mean, we, we got to talk about regulation at some level. Um, mm. You know, I mean, we just have to. What does that mean? Um, you know, uh, it has to be, we have to find a way to create a, a regulatory system that looks at social media and understands what it is, right? Understands that on the one hand, it's a private company, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. On the other hand, it draws on public resources in a number of crucial ways. Uh, and of course, it has serious public interest uh, ramifications. Problem is it's very hard to sort of create those structures in a way that they don't just get torn down uh, whenever the, uh, the other side of the political aisle takes over. Um, <laughs> If we're, yeah. if we're serious about it, though, we got we have to we have to go in that direction. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, the government redlining tweets. Right. But transparency, uh, greater understanding of what's going on and something outside of these companies that that plays a role. Mm. I feel like, you know, um, and hey, Matt, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> Good to see you. It's been a while. It's very nice to see you. <laughs> and nice to see you, too. But um, I feel like it. Um, when we talk about regulations and we talk about um, how to get us, you know, get our voices heard, it took us a while, and I'll say, especially for the Black and Brown community, to even get their voices um, mm. in, these, in these particular spaces. And then when we started um, getting our voices amplified and having more people look at our content, mm -hmm. we um, they started allowing us to monetize. But they capped that. So, yeah. um, and then, so taking that away from us, we still kept moving and going. And now it's to the point where if it's not like, like you said, if it's not something about Mr. Potato Head, if it's not those kind of things that can pacify people that are things that, how long is this going to make me upset for? Is it that serious? That th right. They really think about those things because if we do uh, hit them with, you know, a George Floyd video, or a video breaking down the system for what it actually is, that's gonna start, um, it's gonna start a, a, a war, right? It's gonna have people questioning systems. It's gonna have people going into work, talking to their they employees crazy. That's how they feel, <laughs> <laughs> that's how yeah. they feel. Um, but, but I think that when we do talk about like regulations and things, I feel like that's just another, I hate that sometimes we have to bow down to that because mm. we've bowed down to all of the regulations that they've made thus far. And now even our show here, like it or not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it, but even our show here has been hit hard on being able to push and amplify and yeah. monetize um, from the content that we give. So when we talk about regulations, I don't, I, I don't think anywhere Facebook cares to help us out on that. Yeah. I don't think, I, I, don't, I don't think even Twitter cares to help, uh, to help, help us out on that. Instagram, same thing. They're all for this one thing. And I feel like it's also deeply rooted in the content that we post, of course, but yeah. also in our race. They do not, it's like a, a White people can put out literally, like I said, just them sitting on a couch, them <laughs> talking about BS, like Dr. Seuss, and 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 and, it, and the fact that Dr. Seuss was racist, or the fact that um, uh, Mr. Potato Head is going is is gender neutral. That's a problem, but it, the conversations that happen from these white people on the right Make all are, are disrespecting money. to <laughs> the LGBTQ community, but they still allow those to be at the forefront of right. the conversations. So this is where I say it's, a, it's just a pick and choose thing. We're going to have to keep fighting our battles the way we are. I'm um, sorry I didn't have a question. It was more of commentary because I was listening <laughs> to your conversation, but I feel like we're just going to have to keep fighting our battles and um, keeping our voices out there because what they want us to do is bow down. Mm. That we're going to have to keep infiltrating the system as it evolves, as it grows, and as they try to throttle, as they continue to throttle us. Yeah. So. 
Right. I mean, there's no no question that the internal regulatory systems that that these platforms come up with are um, at best capricious. I mean, I, I think you're you're finding system uh, systematic bias in it, which I, I don't doubt is there. Uh, no question that um, uh, they they are um, you know they're not interested in in uh, those sorts of uh, notions of fairness at all. Right. And and sometimes probably the opposite. I think that's right. I mean the the. The lack of transparency is is something which you know uh, it seems to me sort of the the, the first thing to say. Um, you know, I imagine that when you find them messing with you, uh, the way that you monetize, the way that you engage, I imagine it's really hard to figure out how or why. Um, you know, I won't speak for your your accountant uh, accounting procedures, but it must be just very confusing and difficult. Uh, it would be at least better to have some level of of transparency for these these crucial uh, organizations that are. You know, having such an impact on our public discourse that use public resources in various ways uh, to at least let us know what is going on, uh, make it right. make it necessary yeah. to be, be transparent yeah. in some way, so that you know if you want to if you want to talk back to it, you can talk back to it. Part of it now is it's just a it's a black box, right? It's an empty space. You can't figure out what's going in there, um, mm-hmm. so you can't combat it, and you can't even sort of articulate what's wrong with it. Uh, you just know it's yeah. doing something that you don't think is right. Um, your ability to even address it is is restrained now. So it's on yeah. it's, it's it's many levels, and I, I agree one hundred percent with with what you're you're saying uh, in terms of how it interacts. It's it's certainly uh, not based on anything of close fairness. Yeah. To contextualize it just a little bit more before we get out of here, because because the thing is is part of the problem is human nature, right? Part of the problem is the fact that you know in the back of all of our minds, there is a frivolous topic or there's a fight video or there's something that we like to see. And the algorithms have targeted that precisely. And so we're fighting up against not only technology, but we're also fighting up against human nature. Because to me, part of it says to me that the algorithm serves up what we want, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Versus what we need. In your studies, in media studies, how does that fit into this equation? The fact that the algorithm, to a certain extent, is only delivering up what we kind of, you know, in the back of our heads won't, whether we want to actually admit it. Right. I mean, this is a, a great point. There absolutely is a, a lot of truth in that. There's also the fact that people... Uh, it's not. It's, it's a two-way street. Uh, you come to expect and appreciate, uh, in part, what you're given also, or you can only choose from the menu of things that are presented to yep. you. So uh, on the one hand, I mean, there's definitely aspects of human nature that point towards, you know, less, uh, less careful engagement with important issues. We want to avoid tough problems. Th- that's true. And yet there are media cultures across the world where people do a better job of engaging with this. Uh, part of it is, you know, uh, the more you're sort of given something, you learn to appreciate it. Um, it, it is, uh, you know, media itself is a learned skill, right? Uh, how to watch, and it'll be really basic, how to watch a sitcom, how to watch a, a news broadcast. Uh, this is not something we're born with, right? It's something that we develop over time. If you come from a different culture and watch the way they do TV or news or film, sometimes it feels really foreign. What's the point of this? The point is, well, you know, what, what, what we get helps shape what we want, right? It shapes what we understand. And mm. so on the one hand, I agree, there's a general natural psychological tendency. On the other hand, if there's nothing that pulls back the sort of ugliest version of this algorithm to give us a very specific kind of stuff that monetizes well, uh, then we start uh, wanting it more, right? Because mm-hmm. we become accustomed to it. We understand that it becomes legible to us. And something that's a little bit more confusing, maybe if we'd been given that, maybe if we have more mm-hmm. opportunities to engage with it, more complicated things, we might come to love them or more people might, uh, or at least mm-hmm. appreciate them. So I agree, we're fighting you know, human nature to some extent, but you can't let people off the hook quite that much, right? Mm. Uh, if you give people uh, things that are a little bit more interesting, a little bit more difficult, a little bit more complicated, some people will engage if they're if that's sort of on their menu every day. Uh, mm. And, you know, the way that the algorithm trims it down to a sort of smaller and smaller, more and more uh, sort of enraging but, but empty thing, we come to appreciate that also. So I agree on the psychological side, but keep in mind, we media is, is like a two-way street. Uh, we receive things and we develop our tastes around those things as much as we have taste that we bring to them so what you're saying is we've got a chance humanity (laughs) that's all i'm trying to hear humanity i mean that might sound like simple but you keep doing this 
right? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, uh, keep engaging with, with content that makes people think, of right. course, not everybody's going to love it, but some people will. And, and, you know, you have to make it, you have to keep working with it. It's expensive. There's financial stuff, but yeah, I think, I mean, look, there's a lot of reason for, for being pessimistic, but you know, uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Right. I mean, that's, that's the best hey. we can do. Hey, we appreciate that. And we're going to keep doing it. And we want to have you back anytime. Tell the people how to get up with you, Matt. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Media Studied. i um, happy to interact with uh, anybody who wants to talk. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us, James, Rebecca, another one in the books. Um, and it's, um, it's about that time. Yeah. <laughs> I was it's like, Pro- Professor Sigowitz, Professor Sigowitz is like, I'm like, still on screen. Damn screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> He was like, I am not Ben, but um, yes. <laughs> hey, but he's so professional because he, 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 you know, he, he just kept his eye on that camera until he it was did. gone. And he right. looked at the side for one second and was like, I'm still here. Let me come back. He's the, I, 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 love, I love professionals, right? He, he, he handled that well. But we, us on, our, on the other hand, we go, we go and talk about it. We go well, laugh. We, we can never keep nothing. Always. We, know. we can nothing. never keep nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we love it we love it rebecca i got nothing else my voice is a little bit tired i'm gonna shut up here what you got and then james is your world all right so um i wanted to just tell you not you alexa alexa stop I see you got that double alexa, over there. That's, that's C- <laughs> alexa nope, do you I work for the off. cia <laughs> now what i wanted to tell you Right, Alexa, oh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Make sure you turn your joint off. Turn it off. But um, no, I just wanted to tell everybody, thank you guys for supporting. I love you guys. Mean it. Make sure that you guys tune in every day right here. I say this all the time. I'm going to say it every day. Listen, first of all, before we get out of here, uh, we got social medias. We need y'all to follow. We still working on Twitter, but get on Instagram right now. Yeah. Follow, mm, yes. like it or not. What is it? Like it or not the show, Ben? We need to have a, a graphic for that, which we will. But find us on social media yeah. um, and make sure you follow us. Uh, head to Benjamin Dixon's page and go from there. You will see our like it or not on Facebook as well. So, um, make sure you guys get up there, follow it, retweet it. Or do all kinds of stuff because we want to make sure we grow our community so that we can have our representatives on here who are local, who are yeah. at other levels. We can start pushing people's campaigns. We can start highlighting your voices, your music, yep. your work, businesses, everything. Yep. This is what this channel is for. We are mm-hmm. coming together. We are creating this community virtually, but we're right here. It's like, you know, family, distant cousins, you know? Exactly. So, right. Help boost it. Make it pop. I love y'all. Mean it. Follow me on Patron Twitter. Patron party right? tomorrow night. Patron party. Patron Twitch subscriber. Party. Yeah. Dan, don't there cut me off when I'm telling people to follow me. Girl, you were done. Oh, I thought you were done. Good. So y'all follow me on Twitter <laughs> at Rebecca Azor. R-E-B-E-C-C-A-A-Z-O-R. And go ahead with your Patron party um, plug. I'll be there. I'm trying. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get everybody paid. Y'all, y'all go to patreon.com forward slash Rebecca, BBD you show. Become be patron. <laughs> yeah, because you be skipping out all the Patron parties now. So oh, Patron party I tomorrow mean. night. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me low key, like I don't make don't it. Worry. I don't make it past midnight. Uh, James go. Never, James ben, ben get the first hour in, and then he be sleep in the show later. <laughs> I mean, no, that's it's why I wear my shades. <laughs> I be putting on my shades, and I just be like they're like I'm just, you know trying to vibe. But I be so sleep. That's it. We're gonna be there at least. I'll be there at least till midnight. I know James. James gonna party as long as y'all keep tipping. That's that's the way that goes. So James, <laughs> it's your world, brother. <laughs> Bye, I love hey you man, guys. love y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Love okay? you, mean it. See you and tomorrow. Everybody's talking about uh, the Alexa's going crazy. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> All right, so I hope y'all enjoyed the show this morning. I know I have. It was excellent, excellent, excellent. So we're going to rock y'all out for a few minutes. You know how it goes. It's Thursday, and corporate America is calling our names. Yay, corporate America. <laughs> Somewhere else, he'll find nothing Just give it up I'm not your girl, cause I only love me Don't get me wrong You and I could have fun together When I feel done With having fun on my own It's better to care for yourself Than rely on somebody else So don't get me wrong I'm just riding alone Just walk So, 
out to everybody that's still in the chat room rocking with us. Make sure that you hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that you hit that like button. <laughs> Walking to my grave, okay? <laughs> and make sure that y'all go ahead and get that Voices by Action Sprout app. Download the Voices by Action Sprout app. Join the Like or Not community by using group code 213-756. 213-756. Make sure that you get your stories, pictures, whatever it is shared. And we'll get it played on there, y'all. Make sure that you join. Susan, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Killer Cuts, we appreciate that love. Appreciate the love, everybody, man. Diesel, shout out to you, man. No problem at all, Chuck. They say to raise a kid and take a village. That's the way it's been in the way it still is. It don't matter if you're broke or just hard. Somebody see you. Welcome. Thank you. I can feel it. It's obvious now. The sprout is out. We got to keep out. And I fight to be the top of the pile. For the king of the hill, that crown gets so heavy. It's lonely at the top and hard to hold steady. Power hungry fantasies cause insanity. It's family that gives you power like Stan Lee. Not a cow, but a stampede. Understand me? Cause when your head's in the clouds and you can't see, that's when you fall for that old trick to fight and conquer. But multiply with that many times stronger. I got a team, so my dream's gonna last longer. And I don't fall for the schemes from fast talkers. If you wanna go fast, walk by yourself. If you wanna go far, walk with someone else. Right by my side. I got my tribe right by my side. Right by my side. I keep my tribe right by my side. Life happens in cycles, circles like vinyl. First to the final, stay in. Shout out to everybody that's still rocking with us. We greatly appreciate y'all. And if you feel so inclined to tip your DJ, you can. DJ X3C on Venmo and Cash App. DJ X3C on Venmo and Cash App. Unity, I sing along fluently. Different strokes for different folks, but when we grow different boats, it gets difficult. When we band together and stand together, we can make a city state or planet better. Men of thin drones that break us down by ten towns to the bend gown. And then the past like flame stones, we sing songs to wake you up like rain tones. We're one tribe and unified, we're strong like King Kong. Can't do Nessa Jones, thank you so much. I appreciate that. We glad that you enjoyed it. Aurora, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that, Aurora. Yo, I was looking for a girl that was looking for me. And then I saw her and asked if she wanted some tea. But I Elizabeth, love, 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 Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Send a trip to my beach house. Grab the chrome and take her home. And then we cap the dome, but take it slow. Cause I'll be liking every stroke of this brush we painting on the picture. Until she busts it out the book and start to give the scripture. I don't really mean to take all your Shout out to the Nat Squad. Like you were my closest cousin And I really can't picture Trying to be your husband So I got a jet Try to catch a destination Or better yet I need a doc for an operation Get me out of here I need a drink pronto Catch a horse like the wind Call me Tonto Hide away in the safe of a grotto If this is a taste of my luck I'm not playing the lotto It's as many as it is And Mina I just had to do that Just for you I got you
Pierre, you can join our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the BPD show. Patreon.com slash the BPD show. And join the member. You can donate that way. Bubba. <laughs> that's that's a good one. I just, it, it just hit me. Brittany, y'all know how we do. Aurora Wright, my song too. <laughs> Yo, y'all trip me out. I can't stand y'all. <laughs> Make sure that y'all are in the building on Friday, y'all. Oh my gosh, make sure that y'all are in the building. <laughs> Mina, you're welcome. Chuck Diesel, don't throw nothing out, son. <laughs> y'all can't stand y'all that is gonna do it for another episode y'all of like it or not it is time to go make the chicken sandwiches and everything else <laughs> Mac Bubba, that's hilarious anyway y'all want to thank you so much again for joining us this morning shout out to our guests man it was an awesome 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 episode hope y'all enjoyed it as much as we did because we loved it we do this for y'all man anyway y'all check us out tomorrow make sure that y'all uh like share comment subscribe and all that good stuff man we will see y'all tomorrow friday yes make it through the day we'll be here tomorrow y'all peace out like it or not Mwah.